Hello guys! Our next video is about how to prepare journal entries. So why is there a need for us to prepare journal entries? Because it is the second step in the accounting cycle. Transactions are recorded in the journal. Journalization is the process of recording transactions and events in a book of original entry called the journal. An example of a journal is the general journal. So it looks like this. A general journal is usually a two-column journal. We have this first column and the second column with the following columnar headings. The date, account titles and explanation, PR, debit, and credit. Again, the date, account titles and explanation, PR, debit, and credit. The standard contents of the general journal are the date. This refers to the date when the transaction occurred. So in this example, our date here is June 1, 2020. It means that the transaction occurred or happened on June 1, 2020. Another content is account titles and explanation. This refers to the name or titles of accounts where changes have been caused by the transaction. A brief explanation of the event is also recorded. You will notice in the uh, column account titles and explanation, we have the following titles of accounts, cash and cruise capital. This means that the transaction that happened on June 1, 2020 caused changes in the accounts, cash, and cruise capital. And you notice this one, initial investment. This is a brief explanation of the event that occurred. Another content is the PR. It stands for posting reference. PR stands for posting reference. They are used as a reference guide to indicate the ledger account to which an entry has been posted. So for this, a uh, process or this step in accounting cycle, uh, wala muna tayong ilalagay sa PR. This one is empty. Why? Because we're going to fill this column only kapag tayo ay nandoon na sa sec uh, sa third na steps in accounting cycle. Yung posting to the ledger. Next is debit. This is a money column used to record the debit amount of the entry. So, our example here, we have 100,000 under the debit column. It means that we have 100,000 as a debit amount. Next, we have the credit. This is also a money column used to record the credit amount of the entry. So, our credit amount is 100,000. So, let us review the standard contents of the general journal. We have the date, the account titles and explanation, PR, the debit, and the credit. Let us discuss the guidelines on journalization. The first, a complete journal entry includes the following data. The date, the debit account. the credit account, the debit amount, the credit amount, and a brief explanation of the transaction. So always remember, a complete journal entry includes the date, the debit and credit accounts, the debit and credit amounts, and a brief explanation of the transaction. Next, the date in a general journal includes the year month and day when the transaction occurred. These complete data are recorded on the first entry of every journal page. So, you, you notice this one? 2020. Nakasulat siya sa first na line. Okay. Sa first na line. So, sinusulat lamang natin yung year kapag ito yung Yan, yan. This one, the year. 2020, sinusulat lamang natin ang year kapag ito yung 
start ng ating transaction. This one is June, the month when the transaction happened. This one is 1, okay, the day when the transaction happened. It means that the date is June 1, 2020. June 1, 2020. So unless there is a new year or month on the journal page, it is sufficient to record only the day for subsequent entries. So you notice this one. We have here June 1, 2, 4, and 5. So napansin nyo, hindi na tayo nagsulat ng June dito, saka June dito, saka June dito. Yung year, hindi na rin tayo nagsulat. Ibig sabihin, etong susunod na mga transactions ay nangyari, kailan? In the year 2020, 2020, month of June. So, ibig sabihin, this is June 1, 2020. This is June 2, 2020. This is June 4, 2020. This is June 5, 2020. So, kailan ka ulit magsusulat ng month? Kapag nag-iba na ang month. Next, the debit account is recorded at the extreme left of the particular column. If there are two or more debit accounts, these are all placed alongside the extreme left margin. So, lahat nung nakabox ng red, yan ang mga debit accounts. Yan. Nakabox ng red. Napansin nyo ba? They are recorded at the extreme left. Diba ito yung columns ng account title and explanation? So, nasa pinaka left siya. Walang indention. Yan siya, sinusulat sa pinaka-left. Halos nakadikit na siya sa line. So, if there are two or more debit accounts like this one, there are more two or more debit accounts, sila ay sinusulat ng magkapantay. So, debit account ito, debit account ito, magkapantay sila. There is no indention. Okay? Next, the credit account is recorded with a half-inch indention from extreme left margin of the particular column to distinguish it from the debit account. So, naka-indent siya. Naka-indent. O, oh, ayan o. Oh. Naka-indent siya. Nang ilan? Half-inch. You don't have to bring ruler para i-measure kung half-inch. You just have to estimate. So, indented siya. So, napansin nyo? Itong mga nakabox ng red, okay, ito ay credit accounts. So, naka-indent ng half inch. All credit accounts are similarly placed. So, kagaya nito, we have two credit accounts here. So, paano sila? Sinusulat sila ng magkapantay. Parehong naka-indent ng half inch. It is important to note that all debit accounts are recorded before the credit account. So, laging tatandaan, laging nauuna si debit bago si credit. Debit muna bago credit. Debit muna bago credit. So, hindi pwedeng mauna si credit. The explanation of the transaction must be brief and concise. This is also placed with an indention of 1 inch from extreme left margin of the particular column. So, saan sa explanation? Ito sa explanation. Yan ang explanation. Kung napansin nyo, naka-indent din siya. Pero mas malaki ang indention niya compared to cash. Here, in this example. Or to the credit account. Kasi, it is indented ng ano daw? 1 inch from extreme left. So, si, napansin nyo ba? Si debit account hindi naka-indent. Si credit account, indented ng half inch. Si explanation, indented ng one inch. Again, ini-estimate lang. You don't have to measure it using a ruler. And, take note of this one. Lumampas ng one line yung kanyang explanation. Pag lumampas ng one line, so pupunta ka sa next line, dito na siya ilalagay. So, paano kung lumampas ulit? Diretso ulit dito, and then dito ulit. Okay? Diyan ulit siya.
So, laging tatandaan that the explanation must be brief and concise. Ano yung brief? Maiksi. Pero kahit maiksi siya, dapat, based sa explanation, maiintindihan agad ng titingin sa ating journal kung ano ang nangyaring transaction. Kagaya nito, paid taxes and licenses. So, ano nangyari? Meaning, noong June 2, 2020, nagbayad tayo ng taxes and licenses, cash ang ating ginamit. Eto, bought equipment with down payment, the balance on account. Anong ibig sabihin nito? On June 4, 2020, bumili tayo ng shop equipment, nag-down payment tayo ng cash na 2,500 at ang balance ay utang, kaya meron tayong accounts payable. So take note, the explanation must be brief and concise. 6. Usually a line is left free between journal entries. So napansin nyo ba? After one complete journal entry, may one space. Entry, space, entry, space. So laging tatandaan, after each journal entry, mag-iwan ng isang line or mag-iwan ng isang space. 7. When recording the peso amounts in the money columns, no commas or period need to be used. Ito ang ating money columns. We have the debit and credit money columns. Napansin nyo, ang amount ay 100,000. So, the journal money columns are designed with specific boxes for each amount. Thus, the number 100,000 would appear as follows. This one, the amount is 100,000. Napansin nyo ba? For each box, one number. One number? Okay. Tapos, after three numbers, wala tayong nilalagay na kama. Kung sakaling meron tayong uh, centavos, hindi tayo maglalagay ng period. So, no kamas or period are used. Then, napansin nyo ang pagsusulat? It's from right to left. Right to left. So, dito muna, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. A peso sign may be placed before the first amount in a money column. Ito ang ating money columns. So, napansin nyo, may peso sign dito, may peso sign dito. Ito ang first na entry sa debit column. Ito ang first na entry sa credit column. Yung mga kasunod na amounts, napansin nyo ba, wala na silang peso sign. Bakit? Understood na yon na ang mga susunod ay naka-peso sign. So, sa next page, pwede mo nang lagyan ng peso sign. So, for every page, okay, maglagay ng peso sign sa pinakauna lamang na mga entries sa debit and credit columns. No other peso sign is necessary as all numbers in money columns are presumed to be in pesos. So, napansin nyo ba ito? Ang pagsusulat ng number from right to left. O, di ba? From right to left. Pag ganun. Guideline number 9. When transactions do not include centavos, the centavo column may be left in blank. Saan ba ang centavo column? O, ito yon. Yung mas malapad na portion. Okay, this one. Ito ang centavo column. So, paano kung wala namang centavos? Pwede mo siyang iwanan na blank. Kagaya nung examples natin, naka-blank lang siya. Or pwede kang maglagay ng dash. Yan, dash. Or pwede kang maglagay ng zero, zero. Kaya yung 100,000 would appear as like that. So, what if merong centavo? So, isusulat mo siya dito, sa column na to. And then, number 10, it is not necessary to get the totals of all the debit and credit amounts recorded in a journal page. Every transaction is actually an equality of a debit and a credit. So, eto yung debit column natin, eto yung credit column natin. Hindi natin kailangang i-total yung debit at saka credit kasi dapat kapag ginawa natin yung every transaction natin na insure natin na equal si debit at saka si credit. Tiba nga sa double entry bookkeeping, dapat equal silang dalawa. So 100,000, 100,000, 1,000, 1,000, 5,000, then we have 25 plus 25 5,000. So dapat equal sila. So, we don't have to add the total of the debit and credit. And then, we have types of journal entry. The first is simple journal entry. Ano yung simple journal entry? There is only one debit and one credit entry. Example is this one. So, we have here one 
debit and one credit entry one debit and one credit entry so that is an example of a simple journal entry another type is the compound journal entry when the journal entry has two or more debits and or two or more credits okay ito yung tinatawag nating compound journal entry so a compound entry may take any of the following forms yan one debit and two or more credits so, kagaya ng example na to one debit two credits another example is two or more debits okay dalawa ang debits at isang credit and two or more debits and two or more credits so dito dalawa ang debit dalawa ang credit so i hope na intindihan kung paano magprepare ng journal entries so, kung hindi pa nakapag-subscribe, uh, please click the uh, subscribe button and hit the notification bell para kayo ay manotify kapag may mga bago ng videos. Again, thank you and I hope nakatulong itong video tutorial para mas maunawaan ninyo how to prepare journal entries.